welcome everyone. Welcome to Sunday Morning Facebook Live with Pastor Ronald Roth and Lady Paula Roth. We're coming to you with a revelant word from the greatest Saint Mark, Church of God in Christ. I want to thank you for joining us on this morning and welcome you to come and share with us each day on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. I want to ask if you would even now if you will begin to share this experience with others and even share it on your timeline and tag others that they may be blessed of God as well to receive this word. Who knows by what you're doing how it can make a difference in someone's life just by you sharing this opportunity, giving them an opportunity to receive a word from God and to be blessed of God. I don't take your time being with us lightly. I don't take it for granted. As a matter of fact, I consider it an honor and a privilege for you allowing us to come into your home, wherever you may be right now, to share this word of God with you. As you know from our previous experiences with you, we've taught on that we are now in the season of Pentecost. For the next few weeks, I'll be teaching and preaching on the Pentecostal experience, on the gift and baptism and ministry and gifts of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, so many things, a wealth of information I want to share with you because I just firmly believe that God wants you to be fully informed regarding who he is and regarding the triune God that we serve. You know, we serve a God, a trinity uh, in our faith. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's been my observation that we tend to overlook who the Holy Spirit is. Of course, we know who God the Father is. When we read in the Old Testament, we see how God is operating as the Father. When we get into the New Testament, we see how God is operating in his Son, the Word that became flesh. But in this dispensation, uh, we cannot afford to overlook how God is operating in his creation and in the body of Christ through his Holy Spirit. So today, before I go into this Word, I want to remind you a few things. Feel free to share in this ministry. Feel free to sow a seed. Feel free to pay your tithe by way of Gillify, electronic app that you can download on your Android, your iPhone, or your tablet, or any other type of electronic device that will accept Gillify. And there you can find Greater ST, Greater St. Mark, Church of God in Christ. Feel free to give your donations and pay your tithe. Or you can mail them in to Greater St. Mark, Church of God in Christ, P.O. Box 19. Memphis, Tennessee, 38101. Again, as I go into the word, please tag a friend, neighbor, loved one, co-worker. Share it on your timeline. Who knows what God would do for them in their lives. Today, I want to share with you from Calvary to the upper room. From Calvary to the upper room. I want to lift up in your hearing verses of scripture you'll find in the book of Acts, chapter 1. And I just want to read a few verses, but selectively in your leisure, read Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. But for the sake of time on today, I'm only going to uplift just a few verses from those selected verses. Feel free to type them in so when you look at it later, or others look at it, you'll be able to reference that. Feel free to say your amens, your hallelujah, your praise the Lord, just like you would in a traditional church setting. I want to see later what you're saying regarding what we're saying to you on today. So please respond to us. So again, Acts chapter 1. I want to begin with verse 5. It says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. This is Jesus Christ talking to his disciples before his ascension. Jesus spent many days preparing and talking to his disciples about the need for believers to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Before we finish today, I'm going to go into some things with you about the difference between the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is a tremendous difference, but we tend to try to combine them together. But the operation of the Holy Spirit is totally different when it comes to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Ultimately, yes, it is to glorify God. It is to bring attention to Jesus Christ. But as a believer, 
you need to know the difference. Now look at Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Jesus is commissioning his disciples and telling them that the Holy Ghost would enable you and empower you to be a witness to me. Not only in your comfort zone, not only in your setting, the setting being there in Jerusalem. But I want you to go beyond Jerusalem. The church believers, we have to go beyond our walls. And even now, what we're experiencing, the church beyond the walls, a church without walls. For so long, we were confined and we were thinking about a building. But look at what God has done. God has moved the church now right into your home, into your living room, into your bedroom. He's moved it into your cars, or there on your job. And that's what God wants us to be, a church without walls. So beyond Jerusalem, into Judea, that is the territory, into Samaria, areas that they did not want to go into because they were Jews, and then to the othermost parts of the earth. There is nothing that confines the word of God in his Holy Spirit. And then look at what he says in Acts 1 and 9. He says, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now Jesus is ascending up into the heavens, up into glory, where he was set down on the right hand of the Father as our mediator, as our advocate. And then the Bible says in Acts 1 and 10, it says, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. So now we have angels appearing now to the disciples while Jesus is ascending up into the heavens. And there they are looking up into the heavens while Jesus is ascending on high. And then they spoke to them. They said in Acts chapter 1, verse 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven, this same Jesus? Oh, somebody same. says same Jesus. Same. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Oh, my God, what a gospel message. The angels are reminding the disciples that you're seeing Jesus go into the heavens, but he's coming back again. But in the meantime, you have to do what he tells you to do. Yeah. Oh, somebody type in, in the, in the meantime. In the meantime, we should do what the Lord has commanded us to do, and that is to be witnesses unto a dying world. Acts chapter 1, verse 12 says, Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. So now they're traveling. They got to go and do what Jesus told them to do. And verse 13 says, and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. Oh, that a clause right there. Yeah. And Acts chapter one, verse 13. That's what I want to highlight. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. And that's what I want to focus on today. From Calvary, to the upper room. Yes. Oh, the Lord is yet calling us today from Calvary to the upper room. And there in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, it says, These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So now they have gone and focused from Calvary to the upper room. Why would they do that? Well, in Luke chapter 24, they're beginning with verse 49. It says, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Yes. Oh, we no longer have yes. to tarry for the Holy Spirit because yes. he had not been given as a gift to the body of believers. Yes. So we, they had to tarry for him, but now we don't have to tarry for him because he's already here. Yes. He has already been given to the body of believers. But in Luke chapter 24, verse 50, it says, And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And verse 51 says, And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Oh, somebody shout great joy. Great joy. Even right where you are, shout great joy. Great and joy. the Bible says there in Luke 24 and 53, it says, And were continually 
in the temple, yes. praising and blessing God. Amen. But what were they doing? They were waiting on Pentecost. They were waiting on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When we embrace the season of Pentecost, it is a time for all believers to focus from Calvary to the upper room. Yes. Calvary was the place of salvation, and the upper room is the place of being restored with divine power. Jesus spent his last moments with the disciples, emphasizing the importance of them being filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, they were saved believers, but Jesus shifts them towards preparing to receive the promise. Yes. The Son of God was a gift to the world, but the Holy Ghost is a gift to the church. All that bears repeating. The Jesus Christ we know, the Savior, yes. he is a gift to the world. Yes. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, as we know as a gift, is a gift to the body of Christ, yes. to the church. Well, look at John chapter 14, verse 16 and 18 through 18. It says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and Amen. shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So Jesus is saying that when I ascend back to the Father, he will send the promise, the gift of the Holy Ghost to believers, but you need to be where God has commanded you to be, there in that upper room. Yes. And John 14, 26 says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, yes. whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring things to your remembrance, yes. whatsoever I have said unto you. Jesus is saying the Holy Ghost, the paraclete, the comforter. He will remind us as believers what Jesus has said to us through the word, him being the word in flesh. Yes. So when you have the baptism, when you have the gift of the Holy Ghost, he begins to remind you of the scriptures and what you have learned in the word of God, what God has promised you because you know all the promises of God in him, a yea, and in him, amen. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit represents the ministry of Jesus Christ after Calvary. So after Calvary, Jesus now prepares them to receive the Holy Ghost because the Holy Spirit becomes the spirit of Christ in the earth. He represents the ministry of Jesus Christ in the earth. The Bible says in John chapter 16, verses 7 through 14, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Oh, let me stop right there. Let me park right there. When it says, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So the Holy Spirit, he convicts us of our sins. He reminds us to not violate the word of God. Oh, he reminds us of what God has told us to do in his word. And then it says in John 16, 9, of sin because they believe not on me. And then look at what it says in John 16 and 10, of righteousness because I go to my father and he see me no more. It goes on to say in verse 11, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So Jesus is saying, when we magnify him, when we glorify God, the Holy Spirit gets enveloped into our worship, into our praise. So when we said praise the Lord, yes. the Holy Spirit is saying praise the Lord. Yes. Look at what he says. It says, yes. for he will not speak for himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Also, when we tell you to open up your mouth, 
Give God the fruit of your lips. Yeah. What you're saying, you're being in agreement with God's Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit becomes in agreement with you and you form a praise. You perform, begin to form a worship. And because of the Holy Spirit, your praise now goes to worship. Oh, anybody can praise him, but only they that can worship him, must worship him, how? In spirit yeah. and truth. in truth. Yeah. There it is, the Amen. spirit of truth. He yeah. helps us to worship God because when we begin to glorify God, begin to magnify God, the Holy Spirit, he gets into our praise. He gets into our worship. So that's why it's so important. It's so, it's so crucial for us to go from Calvary to the upper room. Well, the question comes to mind. Do I need the Holy Ghost to be saved? Well, I would say this. In order to receive Christ, yes, you need the Holy Spirit to receive Christ. Because he said, no man comes to the Father except by me, and I will draw him. How does he draw us? He draw us through the unctioning of the Holy Ghost when it moves upon us. And we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So yes, you need the Holy Spirit to be saved. Because without the Holy Spirit convicting us of our sins, we would not be saved. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 7, and the B clause. It says, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Well, who is his voice? It is the voice of the Holy Spirit. He is the third person of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is not an it. We serve God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he has a voice. And later on in the weeks to come, I will show you how we should not grieve the Holy Spirit. Yeah. When you grieve someone, that means they have feelings. So we should not grieve the Holy Spirit by hardening our hearts when we hear his voice. Don't confuse the ministry of the Holy Ghost with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. As a born-again believer, you have some power, but it is not the ultimate power that God wants to bestow upon you as believers in Jesus Christ. I wouldn't dare tell you that you don't have any power as a believer in Jesus Christ, but you don't have that ultimate, that do the most power, that dynamite power yeah. that God wants you to have through his Holy Spirit. Look at what he says in his word that you do have power. In Mark chapter 16, verses 17 through 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This is the power given to every believer. It is not just germane to the clergy. It is not just germane to the pastor, to the bishop, to the elder, to the apostle, to the prophet, to the priest, but to every born again believer. You have the power of God in your life to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Look at what happens in Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And these things the Lord appointed other 70 also. Oh, my God. After he gave power to the 12, he now calls 70 together. He gives them power also and sent them two and two to face every city and place wherein himself would go. So Jesus assigned them to go and preach the word, to preach the gospel. But look what happened when they began to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here in Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19. And the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Yes. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fallen from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And all, over all the power of the enemy and nothing, oh, somebody yeah, shout out nothing. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Well, what are you saying, brother preacher? Look at what the Bible says. He says that Jesus has given us the power as believers. But we also have another power that God wants to give us. The Bible says in Acts chapter 19, verse 2, have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? subsequent to you believing. 
Have you received the baptism of uh, the Holy Ghost? Let me help you for just a moment. Why do I need the Holy Ghost? Well, you need the Holy Ghost because he gives you the power. He gives you that dunamis power when he comes upon you to be a witness for Jesus Christ. The purpose of the gift of the Holy Ghost is not to speak in tongues. The tongues are a sign that you have been filled. You have not the gift of tongues just so to say, well, I now have the Holy Ghost. No, the tongues come with the Holy Ghost. But you may not have the gift of tongues. But when he, the Holy Ghost, come, the tongues are evident that you have been filled. Don't focus on the tongues, but focus on receiving the Holy Spirit yes. and the power of God in your life. Look at what happened there on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Oh, you already know what it says. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, yes. there were with one accord in one place. And suddenly, somebody shout suddenly. suddenly. And suddenly they came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house, all even right there in your house. It filled all the house where they were sitting. Yes. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So now we have believers that are already saved. They're already in Jesus Christ. But something happens to them in addition to salvation. They are blessed with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All with a blessed promise from God the Father. Well, the Holy Ghost is the anointed power of God in the life of a believer. Look at Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. There it is. He gives us boldness yeah. to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. If Jesus Christ, oh my God, was blessed to have the Holy Spirit, surely you and I need the Holy Spirit. But the Bible lets us know that in him dwell the fullness of the Godhead because he came in the volume of the book. But now we have the gift, the precious gift of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. Well, the Holy Spirit also comes to destroy the works of the flesh. He comes to destroy the works of the flesh. In Galatians chapter 5, there with verse 16, it says, Then I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And verse 17 says, For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you should. So when you walk in the flesh, you cannot please the things of God. Oh, but when we have the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Well, also, the Holy Ghost will endow the believer to have uh, the fruit of the Spirit. They are not fruits of the Spirit, but there is a fruit of the Spirit. Yes. And the Bible says that in Galatians, it says Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Then verse 23 says, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. In another message, in another time, I will go over the fruit of the Spirit and how you know what they are and what they mean in your life. But today I want to deal with from Calvary to the upper room. Then also, the Holy Ghost seals the believer. Oh my God. That's a good place to shout right there. Yes. Knowing that the Holy Spirit, he seals the believer. The Bible says that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, in whom you also trusted that you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also that you believe ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Oh, let me share this story with you. I remember even as just a little boy being raised by my maternal grandmother how they would do what was called canning. They would can fruit, and she would get fruit, 
and she would take it through a process and then she would get what was known as a mason jar. Oh, this is going to bless you. The mason jar was just a jar, but it had a lid on it. And in that lid, it had another part. It had a seal. And she knew how to prepare that fruit and put it down in that mason jar and would seal it with that seal. And then it would stay preserved, or we would call them preserves. Yeah. And it would be on the shelf. And it doesn't matter how long it would be on that shelf. We could go back and open that mason jar and that fruit would be just as fresh as it was the day that she put it in. Yeah. Oh, I gave you something to shout on right there. Yeah. God seals us with his precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And just as my grandmother and maybe you, your loved ones, when they would put vegetables and fruit into that mason jar and how they would loosen that seal and you would hear it when it would release and there they would take off the yes. top of it. But down on the inside. Yes. Oh, down yes. on the inside. Yes. Oh, you know how he said. There's something on the inside. Yes. Working on the outside. Yes. And oh, what a difference in my life. Yes. Oh, when the Holy Ghost works on you. When he works on the inside of you. And then the Holy Ghost. He is the promise from God. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Holy Spirit was just not for those in that upper room. It was 120 of them, and all of them were filled uh, with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. But then after that, the Bible says, even when Peter stood up and preached, and how the others stood with him, and the Bible says that 3,000 souls were added to the church, all through the Holy Spirit. God fulfills the promise. It is not God's will that any should perish, but all yeah. should come to repentance. For God is long-suffering toward us. Yeah. So through his Holy Spirit, he helps us to save others and help them to get saved, help them yeah. to be believers yeah. in Jesus Christ. Amen. Then the Holy Ghost, this is going to bless you. The Holy Ghost restrains evil. Yeah. Or how does he restrain evil? Look at 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. It says, and know you know, and now rather you know, that withholdeth, what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. And here's the blessing. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7. It says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who let it will let until he be taken out of the way. Yeah. Oh, let me bless you again. The Holy Spirit restrains evil in this world. Amen. Without the Holy Spirit, the devil would run havoc in this world. Oh, you yeah. think we're having a hard time now. Without the Holy Spirit, evilness would just take over the world. But he is restraining evil until he let it no more and he's taken out of the way. Oh, let me bless you real good yes. with this one. You're going to feel this one all down in your shundo. <laughs> How does the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way? Let me help you again. He is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. So the Holy Spirit in the baptism and gift of the Holy Ghost, he is in us through the gift of the Holy yeah. Ghost as a gift to the church. So now being a gift to the church, when the church is raptured out of here, the gift goes back with the church. My oh, God, my God. you should have yeah. felt that one. Yeah. Look yeah. at it this way. If I were to give you a gift right now where you're standing, and you leave the room and take the gift with you, the gift has left with you. Yeah. So the gift of the Holy Spirit is a gift to the church. And when the church is raptured out of here, the Holy Spirit goes with him yeah, as the yeah, gift yeah. and baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's how tribulation begins in the earth. Uh -huh. It cannot begin in the earth because the Holy Spirit is still in the church. Yes. Oh, when the church is yes. raptured and the Holy Spirit goes back with us to yes. be in glory with God. Glory That's God. when the rapture and tribulation rather yes. begins in the earth. So oh, it has yes. not happened because the Holy Spirit, he restrains evil. So as I finish on today, thank you for your time. Thank you for your prayers. But in that upper room, something happened that made a difference. Don't spend all your time at Calvary. Yes, I thank God for Calvary. Yes, yes. For it was there at the cross where I received my sight. And where the, where the sight, where my blindness was just taken away because uh -huh. I received my sight in the faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. But oh, when you leave Calvary, my 
you got to go to the upper room. Yeah. God is waiting us in the upper room. Yeah. Jesus is Ooh, waiting on God. us in the upper room. The yeah. Holy Spirit is waiting on you in the upper room. Oh, seek him like never before. Pray unto him. And it is my prayer that God will fill you with heaven's precious gift. It is my prayer that God will endow you with that power from on high. Yeah. Somebody shout power. power. Power in the Holy Ghost. Power to live right. Power to be a witness for him. Power to tell a dying world, for God I live and for God I die. Yes. I want you to meet me on next Wednesday. On this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m., yes. I'll be teaching on a special gift and how to receive him. Yes. You need to know how to prepare to receive heaven's precious gift. Yes. When someone special comes to your home or to your place as a, as a special gift, you make preparations. Yes. I want to teach you in the scriptures on Wednesday at 7 p.m. how to receive a special gift. And then meet us again on Sunday at 11 a.m. right here on Facebook Live. Tell a friend, tell, tell a neighbor, a loved one. Tell everybody. Yeah. Tag them. Even let them know you need to hear this word of God. Oh, Continue yeah. to pray for us. Again, support the ministry. Yes. Let God speak to your hearts to sow a seed and to pay your tithe through Gilify, Greater St. Mark, Greater ST, Mark Church of God in Christ. And even also, you can mail it in, Greater St. Mark, P.O. Box 19, Memphis, Tennessee, 38101. It is my prayer. It is the prayer of my lovely wife, Lady Paula Roth, that God would meet every need in your life, Amen. that God would Amen. save you and keep you safe and keep Amen. you healthy, Amen. and that God would bless you. Pray for us, Amen. and we will pray for you until Amen. our next time. God bless you, and we look forward to being with you again. Amen.